for another bedtime story for crazy people and realists the ladybird book of dating dating is a fun way of meeting someone who is as terrified of dying alone as you are ah, finding this person takes time cupid's arrow can strike where you least expect angela has been struck by cupid's arrow and is going to live happily ever after Oh, oh dear. Lonely people know the one is out there somewhere. They will search the whole world for them. It is surprising how often that soulmate turns out not to be on the other side of the world, but fairly nearby and reasonably drunk. The perfect match. Mm -hmm. Men's brains and women's brains are different, even as children. Boys like to knock a hula hoop off an off after eight with a cocktail stick. Girls prefer balancing a first class stamp on top of Mr Man's bowler hat. To get along, men and women pretend not to mind those little differences or they become homosexuals. <laughs> oh dear. Finding time for love is hard because modern people have busy lives. Pat runs an art artisanal <laughs> macaroon business she is very busy one day she notices she has forgotten to get married and still sleeps on a mattress on the floor time is running out for pat dating is all about meeting new people alex spends the whole day at work once an hour he meets the same person his supervisor tim tim asks alex how many funnels there are now Alex tells him. Alex gets home late and falls asleep in front of a programme about vans. Alex does not meet new people. Hmm, poor Alex. Deborah has had many, many unsuccessful dates in the last eight years and still not, cannot find Mr Wright. Her friends tell her she should lower her expectations. Hmm, what does that sound like? Deborah is trying her very best. She still would prefer her dream man to have wings or a crown, but he no longer needs to literally be made of gold. Oh, giving in, girl, you're giving in. Getting ready is part of the date. Michelle's, oh, Michelle's friend, Alana, has been doing Michelle's hair since Wednesday. Michelle's date, Chris, is still at home. He's prepared by doing up most of the buttons on his shirt and tidying his fringe with spit. He's finished a mission on Call of Duty and will be 20 minutes late. Uh-huh. Yep. Vanessa is meeting Callum for their first date. To help spot each other, Callum and Vanessa have both agreed to wear red. Callum said he would wear his uniform from work. Vanessa was very excited. She thought Callum might be a guardsman. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Lynn has come to a record discotheque. She is hoping to meet a new person to spend the rest of her life with again. The loud music makes the new people impossible to talk to. Luckily, alcohol means what they are saying is unlikely to be important or interesting. For the hundredth time lucky, thinks Lynn. Ah. Bernard and Gail are online friends who have finally met. They know they have a lot in common and are going for a walk. All Bernard could think about is checking his telephone. All Gail could think about how she's going to describe this date in the 140 of characters later when she goes to the toilet. Bernard and Gail suspect that in real life they are simply awful people. Yeah. Andrew has said fewer than 11 words during his date with Lionel. Lionel eats quickly. I should be going, says Lionel. Don't go, says Andrew. This is the best date I've had all year. But my plate is empty, says Lionel. Finish the salt, then we can go, says Andrew. Andrew and Lionel eat the salt. I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> Vernon is on a first date with Francis. 
He has chosen a venue he frequents regularly where he feels comfortable and can be himself. Because Vernon is relaxed and Francis is relaxed too, the date is going well. Francis is glad they did not go to the Weatherspoons. Phil has arranged to meet Abigail in a basement wine bar. The bar is hot and Phil is not used to drinking red, red wine. His shirt was off before the bruschetta arrived and he has challenged the waiter to a sword fight. Abigail is going to give it half an hour and call a cab. You got to know who's going to win. It might be the only one night stand. It might only be a one night stand, but there's still room for romance. Gregory has spent the night in a public bomb shelter with Pam. In the morning, he surprises her with a cup of tea and a Bruce Forsyth impersonator. That's, sounds like fun. Malcolm and Trina are on a date they can both enjoy, buying a new calendar. They both love dates and also love dates. Malcolm and Trina are calendar buffs. They met at a local calendar club and have a lot in common. The only argument is over which date they are going to pick for their next date because they love them all. Hmm, no comment. Nita is moving into Owen's flat. Commitment makes Owen nervous. One step at a time, says Nita. At the garden centre, Nita suggests buying a lawn ornament to mark their new life as a couple. This one looks nice, says me, Nita. Thou hast been unfaithful. Thou hast been unfaithful unto death. <laughs> David and Penelope are buying a jar of lemon curd, which they plan to eat this evening over a game of hungry hippos. My girlfriend will pay, says David. Penelope smiles. David has never called her his girlfriend before. The grocer smiles too. Look at my girlfriend like that again, says David, and I'll break your legs. Rebecca is meeting Ian for their fifth date, but Ian has not come. Rebecca is sad. Ian sends a text message instead. He says he's under too much pressure from Rebecca, who is calling him every day. Rebecca thinks this is a lovely, a lucky escape. Every day is two words. <laughs> <laughs> Frank divorced three years ago Frank's friend Jeff says Frank should start dating again Frank is out of practice He does not like where Jeff is going Where Jeff goes to meet partners This place is a cattle market says Frank Jeff says Frank is not seeing the potential Jeff, Jeff got off with an auctioneer here last week <sighs> Marcus and Fiona have had three dates. Fiona knows this means she will either end up spending the rest of her life with Marcus or eventually have to break up with him horribly. Both of these ideas are terrifying to Fiona. Tomorrow, Fiona will fake her own death and John <laughs> join Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> <laughs> Judith is breaking up with Tony. She knows a text message can be impersonal, so she has to come to her local post office. The lady at the counter checks Judy's envelope is sealed. If any of the feces leak, <laughs> feces leak out, the post office is obliged not to carry it. Judy sends her package by recorded delivery so she can make sure Tony, it reached Tony and knows she is single again. In other countries, dating is very different. Bolag has four good beetroot fields. Yogop and Lomog have claimed him. This evening, the women will fight to the death using traditional hammers. In the morning, the winner will marry mates with and eat boatleg. In the future, dating may be very different. Zachary is off-worlding the data for a new relationship onto his leisure cloud to enjoy later. He has chosen e dinner with his administrator, Egg Milon. Here in the year 4,000 million, workplace romance is forbidden, but Eek Million and Zachary of avatars can marry as long as they have a five star user rating. It is Barney and Lee's wedding day. They have certainly come a long way from the first day. They have learned to suppress their personalities and pretend they want the same thing, so they will be able to put up with each other for several years. Everyone is happy for them. Their story is over. 
Ah, happily ever after.